Here's how to set up your audio input and output and your audio device in Pro Tools. Firstly, click on Setup. Select Playback Engine. In the Playback Engine dialog box under Current Engine, click and select your audio card. This is going to show all of the audio input and output devices on your computer, so you want to select the audio card that's going to give you the best audio input and output quality into and out of Pro Tools. After you've selected the audio engine, you can change the hardware buffer size. You'll want to experiment with different buffer sizes to see what gives you the least latency and the least noise while recording and playing back audio. You can also make changes to the number of host processors you would like to use and how many of them you would like to allocate to Pro Tools. You can also set the CPU usage limit. 85% is usually pretty good. This means that you're going to give Pro Tools the bulk of your computing power so you'll want to make sure that you don't have a lot of other open applications while you're recording and working in Pro Tools. You can also select the Delay Compensation Engine settings. The Delay Compensation Engine is only available in Pro Tools 9. You have the choices of Short and Long. Depending on which one you choose, this will make Pro Tools automatically compensate for the delay which can be introduced by instantiating new plugins on channel strips as you work in Pro Tools. You can also change your playback buffer and your cache size. Typically, you're going to be okay to stick with the default settings that Pro Tools gives you for your audio card. When you've made these changes, go ahead and click OK. Now, we're going to set up our input and output, or I.O. To set up I.O., again, click on Setup and select I.O. Now you have the I.O. Setup dialog box open. In the I.O. Setup, we can see the input output, bus, insert, mic preamps, and hardware insert delay tabs. The two tabs that we want to pay the most attention to are typically going to be input and output. This is how we're going to tell Pro Tools how we want it to talk to our audio card that's plugged into or inside of our computer. We do this by making changes to the chaining configuration for how Pro Tools sends its audio out to the audio card or how it interprets that audio in from the audio card. If we take a look at the input tab, you notice that currently my analog 1 and 2 inputs are set to the left and right inputs from my audio card. This is fine, however if I would like to change this and use other inputs on my audio card to send audio into Pro Tools, I can simply click on an icon, drag it, and drop it to a new location. In this case, I've set the SPDIF 3 and 4 inputs to be the input chain into Pro Tools from my ASIO Hammerfall DSP card. When I've made those settings, I need to take a look at the output. Now, I can do the same thing in the output settings. If I take a look at the chaining configuration, you'll notice that analog 1 and 2 are linked up left and right to my output 1 and 2 outputs on my audio card. However, if I would like to change this and send the audio output to a different audio output on my audio card, I can simply click and drag an icon, drop it to where I would like it to be, and now I've changed the audio output settings for Pro Tools and how it communicates with my audio card. These settings will differ based on your audio card and how many inputs and outputs you have available to you. You'll want to consult the manual or the documentation for your audio card in order to find out how many levels of I.O. you have. Once I've made the changes to my output settings and they work well for my monitoring experience, click OK. And now Pro Tools is ready to play back and record audio from my audio card. Communicate, communicate, communicate.